Hiya and welcome to Etsy Crafty. Today I'd like to show you how I bind notebooks together. So these are mostly inserts for my traveler's notebooks, but you can do the same sort of thing just as a standalone notebook. I use stitching down the spine. You can see here there's an A6 one. It might be a bit hard to see the stitching is in white, but if I zoom in in the middle there, hopefully you can see the stitching there and I have five holes along here with stitching and that has a uh, patterned paper cover. This one here is all purely paper and the stitching here I've put a lot closer together so I've made a lot more holes there. It's really a personal preference as to how many holes you make. Now to do this I found a really good tool which I like to use and it's this here. This is a We Are Memory Keepers book binding guide. It comes with this little bit here and this little felt pouch with other goodies in it. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you how I use the book binding guide to make an insert for a B6 Traveler's Notebook. This is a B6 insert from Planners Anonymous that I've printed. And after printing it, I've trimmed along the top and the bottom so that it's 7 inches high because it's for a B6. You can see I haven't trimmed the edges here at all. They're all over the place. The reason for that is I like to bind the notebook and then cut it and that gives it a really nice edge. So I'm going to bind this one using a saddle stitch binding. This is the guide itself and it has four little rubber feet here just to make it a little bit anti-slip on your surface. It then has these little bits here which you can unscrew and you can then see the tool has two different sides. It has this side here which is down in a V type formation and this is the side that I use for making a book like this with the binding. So you lay the center of the book down in the V. These sides here are for all other different types of binding, which you do flat. So that's a flat surface there. So the tool comes with these components and then it also comes with this little felt pouch. Inside the pouch there is an awl. This is basically for making the hole, so it has a sharp edge here. If you don't actually have the tool, you can do the exact same thing I'm doing just with an awl. The tool just helps you to put the holes in the right place and to hold everything steady while doing that. In here there's a thread, which is some type of a waxed thread. And then there's a curved binding needle and a straight binding needle. For the saddle stitch that I'm doing, I just need the straight binding needle. There's also a small instruction manual. So in here, it'll go through saddle stitching and then Coptic covers and Japanese bound piercing. And it shows a few examples. It's pretty brief really, but it shows you some different templates and so on, for example, for different binding methods. So that's just a little small book to get you started. I'll just show you with the cardboard cover first of all. So this cardboard is 230 GSM. So it's just a sort of a cardstock. And if you put the middle of it and push it right up to the top there, and basically have the spine running along the central point of the V where the holes are. You then put this on the top and then use these, which I've hidden, <laughs> use these to attach it. So they're just screwing round a few times. You can see along the center here where I've put the spine of the cover, there's a whole bunch of holes and every second hole has a black circle around it. Hopefully you can see that there. With this one that I bound, I punched in every second hole. So every black circled hole, I poked a hole in it. 
This time I think I'm going to poke in the black hole at the edge and then I might skip the black circled hole and go in the next one. So you can see you just push down with the awl. This is obviously only one piece of cardstock so it's easy to punch through. I've forgotten where I punched so I'll just have a look and it was there and then there and there. And then just so then just loosen that off and you can see here the holes. Next I've taken the next four sheets of paper here and this is 120 GSM paper which is about 32 pound paper and I'm just going to do the exact same thing and just lay the spine into the center and then pop that on top and screw these on to hold it. It does say you can punch through eight pieces of paper but it's probably talking about standard weight paper and since I have eight sheets of paper in total I'm just doing half at a time. So all I want to do now is make sure I go through the same holes as I did before. So I started at the first black hole and then skipped one and went through. And you can see that was very easy to push through four sheets of paper. And these are the final four pieces of paper. So I'll just do the same thing. Pop the spine down in there. Pop this on. And screw that down. You can see it's really easy to use. And then starting in the first hole, skipping the black hole and doing the next one. If it's something you regularly do as well, you could use a Sharpie or some type of pen to actually highlight the holes you want to use. But I do different things all the time with different sizes, so I just prefer to leave it as it is. Right, here you can see the holes that I've made there. Now that I have holes through everything, I've finished with this bit and now I need to put everything together. So the cover and the two sections I punch, just make sure everything's together in the correct order. So the next step is to cut your thread and to stitch the binding. This thread comes with the We Are Memory Keepers guide. It's just a small sample. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's some type of waxed thread though. And I know that bookbinders recommend a waxed thread for binding with. I lost this for quite some time. And so I actually purchased just an upholstery thread from my sewing store. This is 100% polyester. And it's worked absolutely fine for my purpose. I have inserts which I only use for a month or for a few months that I move between traveller's notebooks and I found this polyester works absolutely perfectly. I haven't had one come undone yet. What I do though is I do double up the thread just to make sure it's a little bit stronger. So to ensure I have enough for it, I've discovered over time that I want to cut about three times the height of the notebook that I'm stitching. So I just measure the height three times. And then because I want to double it over, I just roll it along the thread that's in the reel until I get to the end of it again and then I just snip that there. Then with these cut ends, I thread them through the eye of the needle. And then I'm all ready to stitch. With the notebooks that I stitch, I always make sure I have an odd number of holes and then I always go down through the center hole. So just poke the needle through the center there, making sure it's going through all of the pages and pull that through. 
leave a tail on your thread so don't pull the thread all the way through you can hold it with your thumb to make sure you don't do that now if we look at it from the outside this is the center hole that we've just come up and you select the hole next door and go down that so you have one stitch there and we're basically weaving our way backwards and forwards so we've come up this hole and this is the hole next door and we're going to go down that hole and then the same process again down the last hole if you lose hold of things that's fine just make sure you get through all of your layers like so so it's going through all of them and just pull that through when I get to the end I like to hold the middle and just give it a little bit of a pull to make sure my stitches are nice and firm and then basically you start weaving your way back to the center again so we've just come up this hole and now this is the hole next door and I'm going to go down that and then the same on the outside cover just go down the next hole and you can see now we have hopefully I can show that we have three stitches one two three three stitches beside each other on the outside and on the inside here we've got two stitches and then we do one more stitch to go back down the center hole so while doing that just make sure you hold your end out of the way to make sure it doesn't go through the hole with the thread that you're pushing down through the hole so there we are we've stitched half of the notebook now and it's the same process on the other side so we've come up through the center and we go down through the hole next door pull that all the way through and then go down the next hole pulling that and then down the last hole this is the inside and you can see we're coming up the last hole there and then we work the way back down into the center again so down and then down the next hole And now we're on our last stitch you can see we're at the center again so we go down through the center just make sure you hold your tail again so it doesn't accidentally go down with you and then I like to give everything a bit of a firm pull just to make sure everything's tight once you've got all the stitches in place and you're coming back up through the center we need to put a knot in the end of the cotton to tie everything off so what I like to do is just going under the stitch that I've just made I make a loop hopefully you can see that loop there and then I go through this loop to make a half knot then I put the needle back through the center hole and just pull on the knot I'm not sure if you heard it or saw it but you can't see the knot on the outside now the half knot it's gone through into the middle and then all I do is tie another half knot so this binding approach and also pulling this through there's quite a lot of people um, on YouTube and the internet that are really really very good book binders and they have lots of tutorials much more complicated than this one I believe from memory it was C Lemon that I watched and discovered the binding technique so just to give her a call out it's not like I invented this by any means this is just what I do 
So you tie um, tie the other half knot and snip it off and then you've got your little knot in the middle there. So now you can see we've saddle stitched the inside. You can see it along the spine there. So we've bound the book together. So now you can take it in and out of your traveller's notebook as you like or you can just use it as a notebook like so. When I talk about taking things in and out of a traveller's notebook, just in case you don't know, this here is a traveller's notebook and this is the little A6 one I have bound. You just go to the middle of it, take an elastic and put that through the centre there and then that's in there. And then I think the reason it's called Traveller's Notebook is now you can just go off travelling with that and you can have a whole bunch of inserts along your different elastics. The final step I need to do is to cut the edge along here nice and straight just to make my notebook complete and then I can pop it in my traveller's notebook. To cut the edge I like to use a cutting mat. This is a Fiskars cutting mat and also I have a Fiskars rotary cutter and I use a metal edged ruler. I like this one. This is a We Are Memory Keepers Supreme ruler. I like it because I can keep my fingers out of the cutting zone because I can be a bit of a klutz sometimes. So to cut it I just use this grid here which is a one inch grid and I like to cut my inserts at seven inches by five inches so I just need to count along five squares and then lay the ruler down along that line. And then with the rotary cutter I just slice through here. It takes several passes to get through everything because I do have two pieces of cardboard and 16 pieces of paper. Whoops! Sometimes this happens right near the edge and um, like I said I'm a bit of a klutz. So if this happens you just need to line everything up again. and just keep cutting. And then by doing it this way you have a really nice straight edge along there. So whereas previously it all jutted out in different angles and directions because of what's happening here to the pages you now have this nice straight edge which hopefully you can see there. And that's how I stitch the inserts for my traveller's notebooks and that just means I can take them in and out of the traveller's notebook a lot more easily. I often don't bother stitching inserts, I just use the elastics in the traveller's notebook to hold everything in place and that way I can print extra pages and just add them on as well. It really depends if it's something I'm wanting to take in and out of the traveler's notebook and move around. If it is then I like to stitch it and then sometimes I just like to stitch so I will stitch them. It all depends how I'm feeling on the day really. But hopefully you've enjoyed watching this little tutorial as to how I bind my traveler's notebooks and hopefully you enjoyed a quick look at this book binding tool. Thanks so much for watching this video and hopefully I'll catch you in my next one. Bye!